Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for January 19, 2017. I'm teaching a series on the miracles of Jesus. And today we're going to deal with the healing of this, the Roman centurion servant and how he exhibited great faith. So in, and let's just jump right into the word. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus is entering the town of Capernaum. Now, this is where he establishes ministry headquarters. As he's entering the city, a Roman officer came to him and said, Lord, which is interesting. I'm going to deal with that later. But he says, Lord, my servant is very sick at home. He's in bed. He can't move his body. He's in a lot of pain. So Jesus says to the Roman officer, okay, well, he's thinking this is business as usual. Okay, well, I'll go. I'll go and I'll heal him. But the officer responded in a way that Jesus was not expecting. The officer said, Lord, first of all, listen, I'm not even good enough for you to come to my house. You simply need to speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Think about that for a minute. And then he said this. See, now I, I know this. I understand this because I understand authority. There are people who have authority over me and I have soldiers under my authority. I tell one soldier, go. And he goes. And I tell another soldier, do. And he does. And now I say uh, to my servant, do this. And he obeys. And when Jesus heard this, he's, Jesus is like processing what this man is saying. And he said, I don't need you to come. I understand authority. I just need you to say. And Jesus said, the truth is, this man, he's saying this to the people that were with him, has great faith. I haven't found this type of faith, not even in Israel. And he tells the man, well, you can go. Your servant is healed. The Bible says that the, the Roman officer went home. And of course, the servant was healed. But then he asked him, he said, hey, what time did he get healed? Because he wanted to check. And sure enough, it lined up. He was healed at the very moment where Jesus said, go and your servant is healed. This is an amazing story about God's supernatural power, but we can glean a lot from this story. And uh, I could probably, I could do a whole series on the story, but for today, let me just try to reduce, distill it all down uh, to three major points. Here we go. I really believe that this message is going to be a blessing to you so that you can be conscious, super conscious of God's supernatural power so that uh, his supernatural power can be manifested in your life in 2017 so that 2017 will be the best year of your life. Here we go. I have three things. Let's go. Number one, it takes humility. As a believer, listen, it's, when you're dealing with God, it takes humility. It takes humility to properly interact with divinity. As a believer, whenever you come to God, you must come to him with a certain level of humility. At, at the time of the text, um, the Israelites were subject to the Romans. So you got to think about this. Uh, for a Roman officer to come and submit himself to a Jewish man and even call the man Lord took uh, a certain level of humility. This person, he came and he humbled himself to Jesus. Let me just say this. It wasn't in today's word like the written format, but I just feel led to share, with, share it with you now. You will never really receive from anyone you don't honor. And so if you really want to receive from someone who's flowing uh, it with God and operating with God, and there's a certain level of anointing on a person to do certain things, you will never be able to pull on that anointing. You will never be able to receive from that anointing or receive from God through that person if you don't honor the anointing that's on the person. This man, this Roman officer came and he honored the anointing that was on Jesus. And because he honored it, because he operated with honor, then he was able to pull on that. Let me say it this way and then I'll move on. The kingdom of God is, is a real kingdom. And, and, and we like to say that the currency of the kingdom is faith. Faith is how you make an exchange in God's kingdom. But while the currency of God's kingdom may be faith, the culture of the kingdom is honor. It is a culture of honor. So this man came to Jesus with a certain level of honor and respect for the anointing that was on his life. And that's why he was able to pull on it. The Roman officer, another thing about humility, didn't go out of his way. He left his house looking for Jesus, going out of his way, not for his wife, not for his son, not for his daughter. No, he did this for his servant. This man became a servant of his servant. He was serving a, a man who was supposed to be serving him. See, godly leadership, true leadership uh, uh, is an understanding that you get to serve those you are assigned to lead. Number two, it takes 
uh, an understanding of authority to access supernatural power. You really have to understand this point. This point is really the major point of today's lesson. The first thing the Roman officer said, after claiming that he understood how authority works, he said, listen, uh, I just need you to speak the word only and my servant will be healed. He says, I know this because I understand authority. And then the very next thing he said was, he said, I know this because I understand authority. I have people who are over me. I am under authority. I have people who are over me. See, his authority was derived from his submission. He's saying, listen, I can be in authority because I'm under authority. You cannot, watch this, especially not in the things of God, you will never be in authority if you're not under authority. Your authority is actually derived from your submission. You want, you want to be a, a, a ruler? You want to be placed in charge? With Show me who you're serving. Show me who you're submitted unto. You will never be in authority in God's eyes until you're under authority. Jesus operated with supernatural power in the earth. Where was his power derived from? His power was derived from his submission. He said, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I, 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 I see my father do. Because Jesus was completely submitted to the Father, then he operated in supernatural authority. And guess what? You and I are called to be just like Jesus in this world. 1 John 4 17 says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Well, we, have to, we can operate with that same level of power, but we must be submitted to the authority of the Father like Jesus was. See, the Roman officer really understood authority. So he was saying, listen, Jesus, I can say go, people have to go. I can say do, people have to do, those who are under my authority. He was also saying, now, if there's someone who's not under my authority, then I can tell them go, they don't have to go. I can tell them do, they don't have to do because they're not under my authority. But if someone who's under my authority, I tell them to go, they have to go. If I tell them to do, they have to do. Now, um, why am I saying all of this? Because you gotta understand how authority, this under, understanding of authority really gives you, positions you to receive from God's supernatural power. What, what the man was saying, I believe, let me just give it to you from the RPV. I don't know if you're familiar with the RPV. The RPV is the Rick Pena version. So I'm going to give you the Rick Pena version of what I believe the Roman officer was saying to Jesus. He was basically saying this. Listen, Mr. Jesus, he, he's an officer. He walks up to this Jewish man. Excuse me, Mr. Jesus. I'm not here because I'm a Roman and you're a Jew. Actually, that has nothing to do with it. I'm here because I perceive that you have authority over sickness. Now, I don't. If I did, then I would have already spoken to the sickness. If I had authority over sickness, then and whatever I have authority over, subject to my words, if I had authority over sickness, I would have spoken to the sickness and the sickness would have been gone. I wouldn't be here bothering you, but I don't have authority over sickness. You have authority over sickness, which is why I'm here. So since I perceive that you have authority over sickness and whatever you have authority over subject to your words, Mr. Jesus, I don't need you to come I just need you to say, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, my God, this man has great faith. That's the type of faith he wants us to operate in. So number three, and finally, God will meet you at your level of faith. Now, in yesterday's message, I was talking about how God will meet you where you are, like in your condition or in your situation, which is true. But God will also meet you where you are in your level of faith. Last point I'll make, let me explain what I mean. So uh, later, I'm going to deal with the story of Jairus and his daughter. So the, Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, and he came to Jesus because his daughter was dying. And so he bows down before Jesus, humbles himself, once again, that humility to Jesus, submits to Jesus' authority. But this is what Jairus said. He said, Lord, my, my daughter is lying at home. She's at the point of death. I need you to come and lay your hands upon her, and she shall recover and she shall live. So what he was saying is, this is where my faith is. Jesus, I need you to come to my house and touch my daughter. If you come to my house and touch my daughter, lay hands on my daughter, she shall recover and she shall live. His level of faith required Jesus to come. Now, Jesus had the power to just right there where Jairus was on his knees. Jesus could have said, your daughter's healed and, and she would have been healed. But his faith was not at that level. His faith was not at the level to receive just a word. Mm -mm. No, he said, I need to see it. Mr. Jesus, I need you to come to my house. I need you to lay hands on my daughter and she shall recover and she shall live. Now, the Roman officer, he was like, I don't need you to come. I just need you to say. Well, since the Roman officer had the faith to just take Jesus at his word, that Jesus was like, my God, this dude has great faith. 
Your servant is healed. Jairus is like, well, I don't have that kind of faith. I need you to come. Which he's like, all right, well, I'll go with you because that's where your faith is. My point is that God is going to meet you at your level of faith. Where is your faith? What we want to get to is where the Roman officer was, where you just take God at his word. God said it. I believe it is done. Take God at his word. And that God will say, listen, that's my son. That's my daughter. He has she has great faith. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to speak this over your life from a believing heart. Declare this by faith. Say this. Say, Father, this year, 2017, is a year of great victory for me. I will experience supernatural manifestation like never before because I'm developing my faith to the point where I simply take you at your word. I believe what you say, even when I don't have any sense realm evidence to support what I'm believing. And even when it flies in the face of what I'm facing at the moment, I walk by faith and not by sight. Speak the word only, Father, and my situation will be changed. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, I don't know why not. Go to todaysword.org, look on the right-hand side of the website, and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I know you know someone who needs to watch this video, so share it with them. As you enter into this day, just know that this is where God wants you to be, where you can just take him at his word, where God can speak the word only, and your situation will be changed. Do you have great faith? That's what God wants you to walk in. Enter this day walking by faith and not by sight. God bless you.